All right, here's a quick um, and dirty tutorial on the differences when uh, in painting with using uh, only masked whole picture uh, and explanation of only masked padding pixels and uh, mask blur also. So here is a an, an image I generated of uh, myself with a uh, trained uh, model of on my own faces. This looks a little bit like me. Uh, the body, nothing like me. I definitely don't have a, a big ripped body like this. The, the face looks a little like me, but is not perfect. So this is exactly where I'd use InPaint for it um, to be able to change the face to look a little bit more like me. So first things first, uh, we'll mask the, area, the, the face that we want to change. And we're going to generate first by just leaving the mask blur at four. Uh, we will in-paint the masked area. I want the original content because I do want it to use that face that, that's there that's close to mine as the base. Uh, and we're going to leave whole picture, and we'll show what the differences are in there. Otherwise, I'm leaving all this exactly as it is, or A. Um, we're just going to use 750 for the denoising strength and the like. So if we generate that, uh, you'll notice that on as it's work well, as it was working with the in paint over there it in painted the picture at the full size now what i'm going to do actually is i'm going to bring up the steps just so we can see that a little longer um so when we you notice this is the full image it's working on so it's actually running the in paint when it's running the in paint that little area there is however many pixels this is that's that area that it's working at if instead, if you switch to only masked and run it, you will notice that when it generates, it generates basically with a close-up of the face. You'll notice now there's only just that area of the face, which means the face is larger and Stable Diffusion is, is able to see and fill in more details. Now that actually looks a lot more like my actual face because it the model that I trained was trained on close-ups of my face. So since it was working with what was basically a close-up, uh, it was able to put more detail in. And then once it's got that detail, it then shrinks that area that we were working on back down into that part of the, the face there. So you'll see if we hit the generate again, you'll see how it's basically working on a close-up of, of just that area there, and it's able to work more details. Now, this area that I have selected here is the area that it works in and it pads that additional area around it for the purposes of being able to see what's near it so that it can figure out the end painting so the more pixels you add in here if we go up to like 92 or 88 or something like that and run it you'll notice that it's not going to be as zoomed in as it was before because it's going to take the masked area plus uh, padding for it so it's not quite as close in there Conversely, if you bring down the padding to something lower, like say eight or even zero, you'll notice that it will zoom in on exact, almost exactly just that area that we've masked there. That's what that particular slider does for it. And what that does is it allows you to have more or less of the surrounding picture available for the in painting as it is working on that particular piece of in painting. Now the mask blur itself what that does is instead of having just these hard edges here, it will take this mask and then blur it outwards for however many roughly pixels, it's for, for lack of a better term, uh, to make it a, a smoother transition so that there aren't any haloed edges around the side of the head there. So if you bring the blur up, you will notice it will change a lot more of the area around your mask as opposed to just in the mask area. So as it's working through here, see it's actually changing even more of this. It's able to change probably all the way down to the bottom of the necklace that's available there. And again, the higher your blur, the less of a chance of getting a halo around the, the edge of the image. But by the same token, the more of your composition outside of your mask is going to be changed. If you bring the mask blur down to zero, it will literally only change just the mask, which is going to give you a chance for some more sharp edges in there not guarantee it's going to really depend on um your prompt and the like but you'll notice see how we have some haloing in here where we've got this uh transitions out to that this doesn't exactly match up we've got a little bit of seaming in there so that's one of the ways that you can prevent uh seaming uh having seams around the edge of that of your um 
of your end painting is by making sure that mask is set there. So that was an overview of what the mask blur is, the difference between whole picture and only masked, and only masked padding pixels. Hopefully you will find this um, usable and can make your end painting better in the future.